<laughs> Fiddling with the Queen. Fiddling with the Queen. Right. <laughs> um, right. What do we know about Otzi the Iceman? Nothing. He's dead. What do you mean nothing? What's that? The rope around his neck. Oh, that was the other yeah, one. That was the other one. That was Pete Marsh. Oh, He's from Cardiff. He's from Marshfields in Cardiff. Uh, John. Shot a couple times. Exactly. That, that's, that's, that's a good one. Um, we've got a bit of information. Uh, anything else we know about Otzi? Oh, umlaut. Oh, oh, fucking hell's an umlaut. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. She's just, say, oh, she's just oh. showing off. Dead right, anyone else know anything about Otzi? Anyone? He got a quiver. He got a quiver. And he got, he got a carry-on <laughs> film there, isn't it? Oh, I got a quiver. Oh. What are you doing? He got spray in his socks to keep his feet warm. What's the thing? Did he have to go? Did he have a spare bone What's that? Did he have a spare bone Exactly, he did, which has just been found. Get off. I just wanted you up. Right, okay then. Um, now, we've got Oxy there. And interesting enough, um, that there, where he's being examined, is actually normal kitchen um, foil, which is a bit disappointing to me. Um, and there's, a lot of, there's lots of really disappointing things about Oxy. Um, and one of them is the way he was treated when he was initially discovered. Now, some of us... Oh. Hang on! Shh, 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 shh. 19th of September 1991. And what we're going to do is take that off for a minute, right? This, now, it's wonderful keeping out because of the week, right? Well, they were absolutely hacking at him with a pickaxe, weren't they? And his, in, and his arm. In 1991, just, hmm. in 1991, this image was released to the national media on the 29th of September 1991. Um, and as we, and, and Dennis will tell you, we've made great progress in the studio, haven't we, Dennis? Yeah. Uh, we've moved quite a lot of stuff in Barry, and there's a big open space and there you found now. A body. <laughs> um, I, I don't think we should joke about that, should we? No. no. Um, so, what what we need to do? We need to paint the picture from this article. So we're gonna we're gonna read this article as if um, you heard it for the first time. I think that's a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna read it as it is, without me putting anything in there. There there are mistakes in this article. We're just gonna read it as it is. So you don't know anything about Otzi the Iceman. You don't know where Otzi the Iceman came from. Um, you just this is the only information. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build on that, right? So this this image here, a man in the tin foil. Um, you're thinking, what is this? Um, so. This is the first information you've ever heard, right, about Otzi the Iceman. And this is published in the Observer. Um, diplomatic freeze over Glacier Man. And you're thinking, right, okay, there you go. Um, the Iceman, um, the remains of Homo terralensis are brought to light after 4,000 years in an alpine glacier. So far, so good. And then it goes straight into the politics. This is released just 10 days after the discovery is made. Just 10 days. That's all we're looking at. And it took five days for people to realise that it was actually somebody other than a hiker. They actually then thought he was a soldier from the First World War. <laughs> Looks to me. Okay. Um, grab that there. Um, if you saw that for the first time, forget about the headlines. How old do you say that person was? Ninety-three. But she just had a hard life. Yeah, and how old is it? A hundred years old? Two hundred years old? So, so. I don't know. I've not seen many dead bodies. Um, well, you're just looking at it first time. Yeah, say a few hundred. Okay, Alan, don't know anything about Oxy. Come on. Eighty. It's been in the ground for eighty years. Yeah. First World War. Maybe. Good. It's good. We're getting there slowly. Um, so a dispute has blown up over who should have custody of Europe's oldest intact corpse. You're thinking, well, I've never heard of this before. The naturally mummified body of an early Bronze Age man discovered in an Alpine glacier on the Italian-Austrian frontier. Um, it's said that um, Wendelin Weingartner, 
a leading um, local politician in Austrian North Tyrol, has declared, We shall not give up the Iceman either to Vienna or to Rome. <laughs> Austrian scientists who have examined the corpse, which was exposed amid melting ice earlier this month, say the man lived about 4,000 years ago. Wrong, wrong. Um, and probably died of thirst after getting lost at a height of about 3,200 metres on the remote Alpine Pass. Why is there a diplomatic freeze over this glacier, man? Here we go. How did he die of thirst? Yeah, yeah. Did he die of thirst? But this is, remember, hang on, this is the headlines, this is the first stuff you've ever known. Mike, you can ask these questions. Um, this is the stuff first released to the press. The body, together with objects found around it, are being kept in a deep freeze at the University of Innsbruck. Bad weather has prevented frontier police from determining on which side of the border Tyrolean man, as he has been called, emerged from the ice. The sensational anthropological and archaeological find was made by a group of German climbers um, on the Similian um, Glacier, um, really high up. They saw the yellowing skin of a man protruding from the ice and summoned help. You don't know anything more about this, but I will interject quickly. These people thought that this was a, a, a mountaineer of some description. And Kathy, and if you look at that image there, okay, they are ripping the body out. Limb by limb, using their instruments of their skiing. Okay, they're giving this person no care. This is shown in the image, right? Um, so here we go. One of Italy's best known alpine climbers, Reinhard Mesner, was in the area and radioed to a friend on the Italian side, but the Italian authorities failed to react quickly enough. Um, within 24 hours, Austrian police and Alpine forest rangers had helicoptered in and snatched the corpse <coughs> away to Innsbruck. They actually still at this point thought that this, this was a mountaineer or, now this is, this is not in the writing, this could have been a soldier from a conflict that actually occurred on that border area uh, in 1917. So good one, Alan. Mesner swears the body was found 20 or 30 metres inside Italy. The body was moved by the two people who found it in the first place. So they did not really know where it came from. This is all painted in this wonderful picture. While the Austrians maintained that it was in their territory, in the absence of a clearly marked border, the theodolite observations provide uh, the only means of determining the exact position um, of the border. The Bronze Age man had one arm raised as if to protect his head from injury. Well, in other words, as the body's thawing, his, his limbs are being moved around a bit. And it's best really to get to look at this article. So as you go around the room, don't read any of the text because I've read it all out. Just look at the two images and then you'll get an idea of how much of a cock-up this was. Um, so, right. So he was wearing leather leggings and footwear made of bark and leather, stuffed with straw and fur to protect him from the intense cold. Again, remember this article was written ten days later. Um, initially there was nothing found with him because everything had been taken off him by the two climbers. The, even the axe out of their hand, they just tossed it away thinking, you know, whatever, we need to get the person out of the axe. Uh, yeah, he had an axe, a wonderful axe. Um, it was hafted and everything. It was still bound in. It was perfect. Um, so he was clutching, he, he was initially clutching a metal-headed axe. And in the image, it doesn't show this axe. It's been removed. Lots of things were removed from the body. We don't really know if we, we recovered everything. Um, he had a leather quiver carrying 12 stone and bronze tipped arrows, a knife with a stone blade and a pouch of flints. Fears have been expressed in both Rome and Vienna that a delay in removing the body from the glacier because of the disputed jurisdiction might have resulted in some decomposition decomposition, destroying unique medical and archaeological evidence. The answer is tick, tick, it did. All that faffing about um, caused all those problems. And this is so early on in this body's discovery. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to take the very unusual step. Why would you think it was a world so a first world war soldier? Yeah, the back. 
and things. Would, it, it, well, it doesn't say that anymore. Nah, but the axe was removed. Yeah, but you wouldn't have had that kind of axe. No, no, right, 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 right. Okay, get, deal with the confusion. The thing is, the body was moved. Everything was taken off him, right? Whether or not that, whether or not, uh, and, people, and people started to doubt whether the axe was from that individual. So then experts started coming in, okay, it must be a soldier from the um, First World War. Um, and then somebody said, no, it's not. What about these things? And it took them five days to work out the real truth. This is the problem. Everyone's right in the room because everyone got involved and it was a, a diplomatic problem. So you read this and what we're going to do, we're going to actually go to the end of the lecture now by telling you from this recent article, which I think I may have read out the other day and thought I'm not going to read anymore. Right. Um, and interestingly enough, you have a look at that now. Take that around the room. Um, um, li this is an article that I, whoever gave me this, it, it's headlines, it was from this room. Ancient Hunter has yet another string to his bow. And we've now found this now. So this discovery was made in 1991, right? They looked at the bottom of his, qu uh, of his uh, quiver, and at the bottom, there was a bowstring. They hadn't found it until now. Uh, yeah, uh, now, yeah, it sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Mm. The other thing as well is, they only found his stomach. Um, they, they did loads of CT scans, loads of x-rays, um, all the rest of it. They only found his stomach a few years ago, which was still in his body, which is somehow, as, as, your, as your last breath is, is going out, is, is dragging your organs up to your chest. So you get, every, apparently this is what happens, and it, the ice is drawing moisture out of your body and all the rest of it, right? Um, and his stomach was up by here. And they've only just found it in his body. Yeah, but they, they didn't find the arrowhead either for years. So I, in other words, Kathy... I was given a book about it by the professor of Wajima Flip who did it all, <laughs> and he, he never discussed that at all. And, um, so, so he didn't even spot it. I've I, 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 I got to be honest with you, right? What an absolute balls up. It was, yeah. Um, and and this, this is... Yeah, John was right... Um, about this a bit of sinew. Scientists examining the equipment of a Neolithic hunter frozen in the Alps 5,000 years ago have stumbled. Oh, it's in the bottom of that there. We've had it for th nearly 30 years. Um, have, have stumbled upon a two meter long cord of animal sinew they claim may be the oldest bowstring. The find is the latest, rec uh, is the latest record set for, for Otzi the Iceman. A uh, Europe's oldest mummy, who was killed by an arrow in about 3,200 years BC. The other dates here tell it's 3,300 years BC. What's 100 years amongst friends, Alan? As well as having the <laughs> oldest intact axe, Otzi, who was in his 40s, has the earliest tattoos. They took a while to find them as well, 60 of them. Yeah. Oh, um, can't see any tattoos. <laughs> that had to be 61 on his body. Lines and crosses suggesting an earlier form of acupuncture well before the Chinese started using it. While going through his doe skin quiver, remember, now, 30 years later, which has a neatly designed stiffened leather lid that allows arrows to be removed in one movement, researchers found the coiled string, which they first thought was made of vegetable fiber. Um, it's animal sinew. Oh, and they thought, oh my God, we just found this. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like being in a, a completely empty room when there's stuff in the corners and you're in this empty room for 30 years and suddenly discover <laughs> that there was stuff in the corners after all. It must be a bowstring, the earliest ever found, which was ready to be fixed on the bow he was carrying. Um, the, the expert said th that the string three intertwined lengths of sinew came from the leg of an animal, which researchers hoped to identify through a DNA tests. If stretched, the string has a diameter of up to three millimetres. So it's that really, really, really thin, but it's, there you go. A perfect fit for the not notches in the arrows found in Otzi's quiver. Uh, the only Neolithic arrow quiver found. Otzi's arrows had three stabilising feather sections attached by birch bark um, glue bound with nettle fibres in a design still used today. Um, he had dined well on, on the last meal of venison and beans. Right.
Hive things, by the way. I knew you were going to ask that one. Um, right, the, the point is with this, and I know John wants to jump up and tell you all, but um, if, if, you, if you've got this long sinew two metres long, you, you're only going to put it on the bow when you're just about to use the bow, right? Because if you, if you keep um, the bow stretched like that, it'll start to crack and the, 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 the sinew will uh, break and you won't be able to use it. Is that right, John? Yeah. Bingo. <laughs> However, hang on. Um, hang on, he's got more. <laughs> he's got no, more. I'm going to ask John a question. John, right? Uh, everybody, John, you're really interested in, in, in um, archery, right? What's the first thing you would have looked at in the quiver? Would you actually have gone through the quiver 30 years ago? I wouldn't have expected it to be the bottom, but yeah, I would have. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, there's, there's more in here. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, so, John, so tell us a little bit more. If everybody can be quiet. Um, how tall is it? 50? Five, five uh, foot three inches. So his bow is a foot taller than him. With respect to him. Is it six foot bow? Or six and a half foot long bow? Um, is, is that what we actually said? Two metres. Uh, two metres, yeah. Two. Ah, no, no. Two metre long cord of... A oh, yes. It would be, wouldn't it? Mm. So, so that would be the height of... Yes, two metres. Yeah, yeah that's that right. Tells, tells you about his body mechanics, how he would have shot the bow. Yeah. So nowadays we shoot the bow upright, but he would have had to shoot it. 45 degree angle. Or an angle, yeah. So it's his body mechanics. Really the way he moves would be different to a person nowadays. So the other, there's another point here. It, um, a, a you estimate because because obviously as he as he's pulling it, right, yeah. it's going to be higher than him. But as it's um, completely as it, it's without, yeah, it does. It's going to be much longer. Yeah, yeah. it's going to look. So that that's good. So the, all these things are adding to it. But to be honest with you, what a botch up. What an absolute botcher. So what we're going to do now, thank you for that, what we're going to do now, we're going to, um, I, I think I need to give you a few key facts. We've got that nice image behind us. Um, and so, I, I, you know, Lynn, Lynn, help me out with the positive vibes here. Would it be kept, like the bow and all that, like, to one side and then concentrating on the body? That's why they didn't really see it. To be honest with you, I'm really concentrating on the body because they've only just found the stomach now. Oh, right. right, you and actually, Lynn, do do your trick. Technique, if I click this now, it worked. Lynn, you're great. Do you know what? I love Lynn being in the room. Right. And uh, by the way, Lynn, you know memberships for for, for no witches. That's thirty six pounds and not twenty six. So there you go. Um, there is Otzi. So you're looking at this article and the way the way the body is in the ground. Maybe the, the act of his arm uh, being above to protect himself could have been due to the body thawing or could it have actually been in that position. The problem is with the Otzi the Iceman is if the individual was excavated in situ um, at that spot right, by experts who actually cared for the archaeology, not diplomats, we would know a lot more about Otzi today. Um, they, they actually, I remember seeing a few episodes um, of, I don't know what it was, Horizon or whatever, it must have been Horizon back then, before Time Team, and um, I can remember them having to go back the next year to excavate, because they exactly weren't sure where the body came from, finding more artefacts. As the, um, as the ice was melting, artefacts had been taken elsewhere, so they had to excavate them, they had to find pollen samples. It was such an absolute cock-up. <coughs> not particularly bothered about their archaeology at that time. I, in, in Austrians have got some of the best uh, universities looking at archaeology, but they didn't know it was a body that was this date back then. They didn't know X. And we, I don't know if we're going to get to everything today. It's a, such a big subject. In fact, it's so vast, we're not going to get to everything. Um, they, a couple of, two days later, they, they, um, people found out that the body had been found, right? And somebody said it was somebody from the First World War or a hiker or somebody older, right? And, and there were tourists actually going visiting the body. So you, you can imagine that people are going to go up there and say, oh, wow, I've got a flint here, I'll have that, not knowing there is to do with the body. So we've lost stuff already. Also the continuity, right? Alan, I'm going to touch you. Um, I have contaminated Alan's DNA, right, in that spot. So if Alan died now, we, there's a bit of a mix of the DNA. Oh, shit. Sorry. But right, again... Okay. Right, that's it. So there was contamination of the body. People were handling it. People were ha touching it and handling it. So their bacteria is going on the body. The Otzi's bacteria is going on them. So if he had some kind of disease, whoa, nasty stuff. So it was a, it was a, it was a, a carve up. 
And there was also thought to be damage occurring to his thigh as well. Um, there was an image showing that his thigh had been damaged uh, by a pneumatic drill, because they took a pneumatic drill up there as well. Um, now, my knowledge of a pneumatic drill is that you need electricity, right? So, um, or maybe you don't. But they even took a pneumatic drill up there to get the body out of the ice, damaging the body at the same time. There was no care taken. Nobody used a trowel or anything. Five days later, an archaeologist said, I think, I think a huge cock-up has been made here. And then it was, oh, we've got the best archaeological discovery. And the Swiss got involved as well because this isn't too far away from the Swiss border. So if you, if you look at this map, if you start, when I say, so there you go, you've got Austria, Italy, and Switzerland, just a few miles away. So the Swiss were interested as well. Quickly, Jim. When he died, there's probably been several ice ages. So where he was originally, he could have been the same. No, there hasn't been several ice ages, but there's, oh. be, there's been lots of um, heating and cooling of yeah. the ice. So in other words, if we look at that way, the last ice age started to melt about 12,000 years ago. But the point being, the ice has extended and retreated. That's what we're talk, talking about. So that's it. Just for that lady there, um, Ellen, there you go. There are the Alps, over there. And, it, and to be honest with you, I don't think, at the time, I, I was getting really, really angry because um, um, I actually had a friend um, called Fernanda, we were quite close. She actually went there, she was really into her archeology span and um, she actually visited the site of where this was. Um, and it, it, was, it was that diplomatic thing. All oh, the other thing as well is the Austrians had some of the artifacts and the, the Italians had some of the artifacts. And they, they, couldn't, they couldn't work out who was to get these artefacts. Some of the stuff was frozen, and it was just such a mess. And the golden rule about any, anyone who's worked with human remains, I, don't think, you, I think you have, Cathy, and, um, and obviously I have. The, the, the rule with human remains is that the human remains, at all possible times, and all the associated stuff should be kept with that body, because that's, that's a unit, right? That was not the case. It broke all archaeological rules. And Jane, it's not fair to say the Austrians <laughs> didn't care about the archaeology. But when it, comes to, um, when it comes to sort of professors and getting things wrong, um, Kathy's already mentioned something. So that was what was protruding out of the ice. So by the... Dennis, can I have this back? That's what was protruding out of the ice initially. So you can imagine that they... Um, th this is face down in the ice. <coughs> by the time the experts have got there... They've already turned the body um, 180 degrees, um, and it's so it's it's such a mess. So by t moving the body 180 degrees, of course you're going to get the arm moving. We're not really sure what was going on, um, and that's what we're looking at initially. What I'm going to do, um, you two know, Gillian, you look you're, you're up in the Swiss Alps, right? Looking at that body, what do you think about the age? Forget about what you know. Um, in, in our, is that 100 years old, 200 years old? 200, 50? 200, maybe, 300. In, I don't know, I've never seen the body. Come, come on, Angie, come on. Let's I have a clue. I don't, I, I, it's not the sort of source where you see bodies. I mean, I've seen them, the Egyptian mummies, and they're a bit like that. But nobody's giving me a date of anything really old, right? The, the, fact, the fact of the matter is, I, I'm going to step out of the box now. If I found a body like that, not being an archaeologist, um, but having respect for people, right? The one thing I the one thing I wouldn't do is touch it, or move it, or handle it, <coughs> or interfere with it, right? Well, it hasn't got any clothes on. It's got no hair, so we presume it's older than a first world. Sorry, sorry, Alan's got no hair either. He's going to hit me in a minute. <laughs> sorry, Alan. He looks like he's in a sitting position. No, he's been it? in a high period with a hat and you know yeah, clothes yeah. and. Even if they were, you know, from the 1900s. But, but with an old body, Chris, I think we've established that much, but this, this body itself, would you touch it? Would you interfere with it? Would you move it? No, no. no. we'd call the police. <laughs> well, exactly, but they, they didn't do that. They just saw... <laughs> they decided they decided to hack the body out of the freezing ice, right? And that that is the stupid result of two absolute idiots. <laughs> oh now Well they they were doing it with ski poles. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That was, that Maybe they thought they'd done quick 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's there, ski pod. Um, there was the people that found the bodies in the lab. Yes. Yes, yes, it was, it was. And, and then the yeah, experts got... The weird the thing is, the experts got there a certain... Um, a, a certain Reinhold Meisner, and he was actually involved in this as well. So even the even the police, even the gendarmes... Yeah, but he, he's a climber. He's one of the Everest climbers, isn't he? Reinhold, what's his name? Well, the thing is, somebody said to me, because they're not archaeologists... Uh, anyway, um, so that is a reconstruction of some of the clothing. No, How could they be constructed so if the clothing where, wasn't there? Yeah, where did they find the clothing then, Carl? Uh, no, what, what they did, because the body had been moved, the archaeologists went there a few days later, and a, a year later, and they started to find all this stuff oh, spread okay. all over the place. Because the body had been moved, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it had been mucked around with and all the rest. So, so the it, other thing as well is... It when was you, in a bit of a dip, though, so it did help to concentrate the It stuff. did. All the artefacts were concentrated in one spot. Yeah. That is a good yeah. point. Well, surely he'd have his clothes on. They wouldn't be this sort of scattered around him. The thing, if you look at the original description, he did, He was holding an axe. So where is it? Oh, and yeah. No, but his clothes. Where, he wouldn't be laying in the snow naked, would he? So He wouldn't. There, there were actually bits of clothing on him, but as they got him out, they all peeled off. Oh, they didn't. Right. Okay. This is the point. If, if you look at the bottom, you can actually see yeah. some yeah. footwear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But even that fell off as they moved it. All the stuff dragged off. Do you, so not, do you not think it's strange that he's the only one there? I would. Um, the thing is, the oh, thing is, yeah, do you know, do you know what, what right? Do you, do, you know, do you know what, in all the years I've been looking at Otzi the Iceman, I've never ever asked or seen <coughs> anyone um, question about the fact that there's only one person there. Right. That's a really good point. This is around. all based on the fact that there's only one body there. There may have been two. The other one could have been moved. It's all based on this one. So all this story. Right, let's, let's carry on. Let's carry on. So we're going to leave that. Hunters and God knows what up there. There might be hundreds of them there. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, hunting parties would have been more than one person. He could have fallen down the castle and been drawn to there's loads of different ways. Oh, look at Canada and, and, and that. They, they've got often right, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep that in the background, and I am going to, Lynn, right, be with me, right, make sure this next thing I do, right, doesn't muck things up, okay? <laughs> well before then, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just going to, we're going to use Lynn, Lynn's magic, okay? Lynn, do you, do you, do your bit? Yeah, I'm doing it. Do you, do your bit? Lynn, it's working, it's working. Good, 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 excellent. So I've got some really nice information. So, um, right. So he's known by various different names, which we've already mentioned. There's also another name for him, the Hals Le Bliok Mummy, um, Tyrolean Iceman, the Simlian Man, um, and Otzi the Iceman. There's loads of different dates being given for him, but the, because of the contamination, um, we're never really going to be sure about about the dates for this this individual, and, and I'm I'm ashamed to say about the way this individual was treated. But we do have a lot of key information. We know we know that the radiocarbon dating, the best radiocarbon dating, even some say he was five thousand two hundred years old, um, and I'm going to explain something on that in a minute. Um, some say he was um, three thousand uh, five thousand. So. 5,200 years old, some say he was 5,300 years old, um, and if, you, if you're trying to calculate that, right, the dates have to go from 1951, so it's 1951 back 5,200 years or 5,300 years, uh, because 1951 is an important date because of what reason? I was born. Happy. <laughs> 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 That's the bloody answer then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks for spotting that, Ellen. The real reason is that date is the date that we actually see um, nuclear testing going berserk. So that means if you're doing radiocarbon dating, um, um, before 1951, you're able to trace the radiocarbon, and after that, it's all contaminated because of the nuclear testing. This is, this is where, so if, if anyone ever gives you a date and says, Alan, that's 1,800 years old. But you've got to date it from 1951. Um, anyway, not from today's date. Moving on. Now, um, there's a few other things we need to chuck in here to, to even add to the confusion. I know Lynn's already confused, but it's the same every week. 
Um, I know the other week Lynn said to me, can we have a lecture that I can actually make sense of? That's the only reason she comes. Anyway, so she is actually referred to by some experts as a Neolithic individual, but he can't be a Neolithic individual because he's got a copper, uh, he's got copper and he's got bronze tools with him. When I say tools, arrowheads and, and there's, um, there, there's, there's obviously, um, we've, we've got all the other, uh, we've got the axe as well. Couldn't think of that then, sorry. Is there? Numpty. Um, so therefore, he can't be Neolithic, but some say he is. Um, some say he's of the Chalcolithic age. Between the Neolithic and the Bronze Age, so if we think of the Bronze Age starting uh, 4,100 years ago, okay, there, on, on the 14th of August, um, because Ellen likes these precise dates, the period either side this way into the Bronze Age and this way into the Neolithic period is called the Chalcolithic period, or the Chalcolithic period, which is the Copper Age. But because he had bronze tools with him, he's in the Bronze Age. So sorry about the confusion there. There's, the main thing is... How we explain that? The Bronze Age started earlier in the rest of Europe than us. Our Bronze Age comes about a thousand years later. Um, so he's um, a European Bronze Age man. Thanks for adding to the confusion there. Um, so the discovery. Um, this is another report of the discovery, which, adds, which, which I will um, gloss over a little bit. So... Two German tourists, we know that, elevation of 3,210 metres on the east ridge of the Fenswitz um, on the Ostia Alps on the Austrian-Italian border. The tourists, Helmut and Erika, uh, were walking off the path between the mountain passes of Hasdubjok and Tizunjok. Sorry, it's just making up as I go along, but I'm trying to read what I can get here. Um, they believe that the body it was a body of a deceased mountaineer. That's why they hacked him out. The gendarme um, and some other experts come in the next day um, and they tried to get the body out using a pneumatic drill, ice axes. Um, one of them hit the... Anyway. <laughs> one of them hit the pelvis by accident. He's dead. It doesn't matter. I tell you what, if it, if it was your son or your daughter who'd been hit by an, an axe, even though they're dead... I don't think you're going to be happy. Um, if they're the, the, I need to make this point. If this person's being classed as a mountain climber, why are they treating him in this way? Why should anybody treated be treated in this way? If this was, it could be a murder case for God's sake. Do you know what I mean? That the, the treating this, the, these are the two professionals then who turn up the next day. I suppose, yeah, anyway, and then the next, then the next day, um, Reinhold Mesner turns up. Uh, with Hans um, Kambler Handler um, and uh, they turn up with with two groups of tourists to visit the body this is just like the golden rule of, of a set of human rema remains right is you've got to try at all times treat that set of human remains with respect you, you cannot um, you, you cannot disrespect that body right you, you've got to treat it with respect you can't have loads of people viewing this body you just can't do that um and um and dennis will tell you this is how we treat the stuff that we work on am i right or wrong dennis you can tell i'm wrong uh, no you're right yeah we, we and when you're working on these remains dennis isn't that studio and barry very quiet yeah it is i, I one minute i'm at this tone we get we get the stuff out and when i say the stuff we get the bones out and it goes quiet um and this is a brink of you with every week. <laughs> um, I don't think that would be very respectful, thank you very much. Um, it would be quiet, though. It, it would be quiet, and no, there would be no lecture at all. Um, so, th this, this is the early stuff. This is the early stuff. Um, and they started surveying the, the exact locality of where the body uh, um, was actually found in, in October 1991. It showed that the body had been located 92 metres inside um, Italian territory. It wasn't an Austrian body at all. It was Italian. Um, because after the, it, after the war, the First World War, the border had been moved. Because um, Italy were the victors over Austria in the First World War. They, they moved the border a little bit 
right? So in other words, this had been found in its Italian territory. So now there's all these politics. Maybe that's why they wanted to get the body out quickly. I think, oh, you, 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 I tell you what, your impression of Germans, right, is really low, and I've got to make Austrians, this... Austrians, I said. No, Austrians. good, I'm glad you mentioned that, because Austrians are separate from Germans. Thank you very much. Exactly. After the, after the 1944, not 45, <laughs> there you go. You've really upset somebody from Germany. Um, so, you, you, we go, scientific analysis. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this bit here, and then we're going to do an article of the week, another article of the week. And then we'll kind of do a bit more, then we'll do another article of the week. Um, the corpse has been extensively examined, measured, x-rays, and dated. Um, unfortunately, they're still finding stuff today, so it can't be that accurate. In August 2004, um, the mistake of thinking... This is 2004. The, the mistake of thinking it was a, a soldier from the Battle of San Mateo in 1918, where I do believe um, the Italians were victorious, uh, uh, finally over the Austrians, um, they've actually started finding bodies associated with that war and lots of them don't have any clothes on because what, what happens um, um, I, I'm not I, I was going to be very crude then but um, what happens when, when you're wearing clothing and you, you, your, your body is moving um, within an ice sheet or within ice the ice draws out moisture out of your body right? so that means that your, your body actually gets thinner and thinner so meaning that that your, your shoes are going to be taken off by the ice that you, you, there's going to be drift your body's going to keep together you might start to lose fingers and stuff right you're going to you lose hair as well because the ice is going to rip it off you um, so um, and so in other words you're going to be left naked um, but also when people died in the war we, 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 the other people could take their boots off oh them. definitely because they would lose definitely them as well. yeah. so and, and, and in a, in a way, in a way, in a way, the only thing stopping my trousers coming off—they're very tight. They're actually my shoes. So when your shoes come off and there's any movement of water, your your, your clothing is actually going to make its way off. So that's a really good point. Um, so a few more facts because John is tapping at the bit here. Um, current estimates, okay, nineteen. Uh, current estimates, two thousand and sixteen. Otzi was um, 160 centimetres in height, in other words, 5 foot 3 inches tall. Um, now that's the estimates, because obviously he's shrunk a little bit, only a tiny bit since, uh, because the actions of the ice. Um, and he weighed, <coughs> they, they, they believe he weighed um, 110 pounds, which I do believe is between 9 and 10 stone, you can correct me on that. Um, and was about 45 years of age. So, nice age. A bit like uh, Chris's age here. Okay. You're going to be hunted to death next week. It's a reconstruction. Um, when it, but, however, when his body was found, um, it, was, it, it had been emaciated because of the actions of the ice taking liquid from the body. So, the body itself eventually turned out to be from 50 kilograms, 110 pounds, it reduced in weight to just over 13 kilograms, which is 30 pounds. So in other words, you've got a body that if, you know, in the most circumstances, there were still clothes associated with this individual, but under most circumstances, the body would have been left naked within a short period of time. Um, now, <coughs> Very little, li very little is seen as deterioration of his body. A little, little bit of about his head um, may have been showing back in the day, but eventually the body was covered with um, ice. Now you can't believe initial reports. This is just for um, Ellen. Initial reports claim there is penis and most of his scrotum were missing um, due to the actions um, of those out skiing. Um, but this was later shown to be unfounded, and in fact, they, they did locate his penis. Down, they did they they did locate his locate his penis. There was an article back in I think late nineteen ninety one of a collection of famous penises that went missing in the history. I remember because I had a, um, a newspaper around. It was headlines: missing penises through history. Two Camoons went missing in nineteen forty two. Apparently, Napoleon's went missing as well. Yeah. And on that list. Oxy's penis was stolen by the Austrian 
hikers. So anyway, so that, that was actually, um, they didn't call them mountaineers. So, um, but they eventually did find his, his manhood. And there was a story about Adolf Hitler's going missing, but that's something else. Um, so we, we do know from lots of um, analysis, and we'll, go, we'll hopefully do a little bit more of this. Um, um, we do know that the analysis of pollen and dust grain, grains and isotopic composition um, of his tooth enamel indicates the strontium that he actually he spent most of his childhood um, near the present village of Fendhun, near Bolzano, um, uh, but later went to live um, in valleys about 50 kilometers further north. So in other words, this individual is moving around a lot, and we can tell this from the strontium. There's also one other fact that I nearly completely missed on Tuesday, or when I did this on Tuesday. Got to the end, and I thought, sorry guys, nobody's going. Um, because I realised this following fact. Um, somebody asked a very silly, I thought it was a silly question. Um, did he live in some kind of a village? And I said, of course he lived in some kind of a village. And then I had to give an answer. Ah, right, I remembered why he was living in some kind of a village for most of his life. Um, is they, they actually found out that he would, had been working um, with copper um, and bronze um, <coughs> because there was contamination um, involving arsenic um, with, with, with his clothing. Um, this is a byproduct from the, the copper smelting that he was actually involved in. So we know he's in a village. You can't sort of smelt copper up in these types of landscapes. You've got to be able to do it down in the valley. So we know that he moved quite extensively. So what I'm going to do now, we're going to do a little bit of an article of the week. Um, and then I'll have worn myself out. Gillian, I've got to thank you for bringing the milk every week, Queen. Um, because I want a cup of tea. I know Chris is in the room, she makes me a lovely cup of tea. Thanks, Chris. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a bit of an article of the week. We're going to chuck this article of the week in there. I've been nice to Chris today. I'm always nice to Chris. Not, not Lynn, though. Um, you have noticed Lynn's even stopped doing a raffle because she like deliberately make sure she doesn't win anything. Oh um, no, 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 that's terrible me saying that, Lynn. I, I do pick on you a lot. I'm not saying any more. Uh, right, okay, okay. Let's just get this article up. And if it if it comes with it, uh, why am I getting headlines? Prince Harry appears for the first time since Mexit. I get it's so annoyed with that one. Oh, everybody is. Right, here we go. What we're going to do, a really weird article, but it's dated back to... Uh, this, is, this is... All the stuff today is all over the place because Otzi's all over the place with the archaeology. Um, they just realised um, they've had so many experts um, involved in this body, they've only actually found now that frozen moss reveals fatal final journey of 5,300-year-old uh, Otzi. So, uh, here we go. So, we'll read out this article of the week. Um, a a da -da -da -da, right. Fresh clues have emerged about the final journey of a European glacier mummy, shot dead by an arrow before his body was preserved in ice for thousands of years. Um, and it goes to say that the latest study um, has been examining mosses, um, in brackets, sub-fossils, which have been found um, on his body, um, on his clothing, and actually in his stomach, um, that has, was, which was found, I, his stomach was um, found not so long ago as well, as we've already mentioned. Um, every part of his body has been exa examined, except for his quiver, recently. Um, and it's said that um, they found, in and around his body, carried to the location, um, the representatives of 75 species of mosses and liverworts. So in other words, he picked some of the liverworts up, uh, mosses, put them in his little um, sack with him. Um, bits were actually associated with his shoes. Um, Bits had got into his clothing. Um, some had already um, been um, caked into his boots after he um, stepped into some dung from animals um, as he walked across the landscape. <coughs> um, 
And the interesting thing is about the mosses and um, liverworts that are actually found associated with body, only 30% are within that local area where he was found, sort of within, within about a uh, hundred, uh, about a thousand metres as so we saw in Corpus Christi. Alpine meadow then? Ah, bingo, you've got it. Meaning, actually that was a perfect, you know, you're getting good at this, Ellen. Meaning the rest were transported to the site of his death from elsewhere. Um, researchers believe a lot, you know, seventy percent of these are non-indigenous -in plants, um, and it says here specifically um, some are caked on him from the dung he had walked in to associate him with an ibex or wild goat. And there's an interesting point there. Ibex, remind me in a second. Interesting point there. Um, if if you're in a frozen wasteland, right? Um, the first thing um, that the dung of an alpine ibex um, a type of wild goat. First thing that's going to happen is going to frost straight away. It's going to freeze straight away. So the only way you're going to be able to walk in an animal's dung is actually if it's um, still moist and it hasn't frozen. So you're going to be able to collect that from a lowland area. You're not going to. Oh, um, a goat has just gone to the toilet there. I'm going to step in it immediately, right? By the time you've stepped in it, it's going to be frozen. So the only way you can actually get dung on you um, is because you've actually walked in dung in lowland pastures. Um, ibex, thank you very much, you're good at this Chris, um, Chris was okay. Um, an alpine ibex, a type of wild goat, and other types of wild goats as well. Um, the, I was, I, I love listening to the same radio programmes that um, Goff listens to. I don't know if you picked up this the other day on BBC Radio 4, Goff. Uh, there was this lady talking about um, um, dinosaurs in oh, the yeah. United States. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. And she said that um, we might have all these dinosaurs in the Permian and Devonian periods, so they're all sort of um, evolving types of uh, later uh, very large dinosaurs. And then in those periods, like the Cretaceous and the Jurassic periods as well, you get those upland dinosaurs. And she was saying that because all those animals live in upland areas, you're never going to find any evidence in the archaeology. By the time those upland areas, by the time those animals have died, those mountains have eroded away. All the evidence has been smashed to bits, and you're never going to get representations of upland dinosaurs. Really good point, because it's got relevance here. And the reason why it's got relevance here is the existence um, of the ibex through the ibex dung being found on the guy's boots. We know that they're up there uh, around that landscape in the lowland pastures, may it be, uh, but we know that they exist at that time with the absence of finding their bones because we've actually found their dung. So th this. All this stuff has to be um, analysed. And guess who has fallen in love with, with two billy goats? Guess who's got two billy goats now? Welsh mountain billy goats. I couldn't want that one, does it? Me! Really? Me! Oh, Me! I got two upland mountain I'm billy goats, and they're really short, right? And I give them cuddles, and, and I smell of goats afterwards. Yes, but they're boys, and they, they're going to stink. They oh, yeah. almost stink. They don't live in the house with us, they live at the allotment. They were vet people. They are lovely. I, I give them cuddles and all sorts and of things. what are you going to do Because them? they're goats, they're going to get out and jump over the hedges and through hedges. These are nice little goats. They're going to get all your stuff on your allotment. Oh my God, I've got this love of my goats, right? And I've got you having a go at them. Right? What, what are you going to do yeah, with them? You can always take them. At least if you have nanny goats, you can milk them. What, what are you going to do? They are already neutered, right? Oh, oh, do you know what, right? Do you know what I'm going to do? Next time, I'm not going to tell them anything about my animals, you know? Bring one in. For the recipe. No, I'm not bringing one in. You haven't said what you're going to do with them yet. Yeah, for the recipe. They're pets. For God's sake. Oh, my God. You know, can I just finish? Because I want a break. Julia, they, they're cramping my style. They really are. Um, now... Lots of, uh, we've already mentioned that lots of um, these mosses are found on his clothing and his gear. He's eaten some of these. Um, and these, these help us understand the precise moments of where he was. Um, and what, what we're finding is one specific species uh, of the mosses um, really gr grows in low altitude woodlands, specific low altitude woodlands. Um, and these mosses they actually found not only on his clothing, but were actually inside his gut as well. So we know he stopped in low altitude woodlands at some point, and he had a meal there. 
as near proof as it is possible to get the um, to get that the Iceman climbed from south to north. Um, these findings corroborate an earlier study in 2007 that had examined the pollen content of Otzi's <coughs> gut to reconstruct his route. The study had concluded that in his last 33 and a half hours and one minute, Otzi had travelled from low-lying areas with warm, loving trees. I'm a warm, loving tree! <laughs> to high-altitude zones 3,000 metres high. Research over the years has formed as a disaster theory for his death. Otzi may have returned to his native village from the Alps, only to be met with some kind of conflict that forced him back to the mountains where he died. Or, the very important point, you know, you know what's so good about, we're going to have a break now, you know what's so good about doing these classes is that one or two of you come up with little gems. And the idea that, who's to say that there weren't more of Otzi up there at that point? Somebody well, must have been up there if he was shot, shot, surely. Yeah. 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 No, no. Ah, uh, no. It, 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 look, the wound itself, the wound itself took, took two days to kill him. Well, this is what they're examining. Took two days. Um, but the other, the other thing was what they, what they say. I know somebody's got a question. What they say is Otzi was in a village. I've seen a program with, on this. Otzi was in the village, right? <coughs> and suddenly, somebody knocked on his door and they said, "Right, Otzi, we want you out, right?" Um, and he, he just left the village and they, they shot a bow at him, uh, they, they shot an arrow uh, and the arrow um, lodged, um, I think it was in his back as, it, as he's trying to leave the village. Um, so he's going to the dog? Not, at close, not at close range, interesting, but not at close range from a little bit of a distance, right? The one thing I don't like about this is that Otzi went up there fully prepared, he had rations, he had his fire starter kit, um, he had his bow and arrow, he had a dagger, he had all the clothing, he had all the survival equipment to actually survive in those conditions, right? It was just a wound eventually killed him. There's no way this individual said, oh, hang on guys, right? If I get all my stuff, then you can chase me out of the village, that's what we'll do. Hang on a minute, I'm going to put my boots on, one more minute, right, I'm going. It could have been a hunting accident because his body and his skin and flesh were preserved so well and not eaten by animals or bacteria that the snow must have come in straight away. He could have been out there hunting for the last animal to take home to last him through the winter. Well, really With another him. man, the snow came mm. in, visibility's cracked, he got shot by mistake, being thought that he was a creature, not a human, and the, the weather came in, the weather must have covered him up immediately. Mm. Do, do, do you know what? For him to have lasted, mm. to have his flesh and his that skin last easy. so long. Yeah. Yeah. Two, it was the snow in winter, the snow just came, it was dreadful. It happens. He got covered and covered, and from then on, he's never been uncovered. Keep going, right, okay. Ellen, I have never heard that in any of the stuff, any of the articles, that he's not even been proposed. So well done, big tick on that. I and well done for suggesting somebody else. And I tell you what, this is brilliant. This is why I do that. We're going to take our break now. Are there any other questions? Oh, Jim, you've got one quickly. I know you weren't. It's my idea. You're liar. No, I was going to say, he was hunting venison, the deer ducked, and he got shot by accident by his partner. Or... And if you're out with all your hunting kit, when bad weather's coming in, the winter's starting hard, a hard winter's time. It was his last pitch to get an animal in at home in his tent or where they live. So last winter, it was the last episode out to get food in. And I this sounds more sensible. The dreadful weather coming in, visibly he's a chick over the village. He must be covered immediately, doesn't it? He's lost it like that, and they'll be in pets or the thing, the thing, the thing, this is really good, Alan. The only way that his body wouldn't have been, would have been undisturbed is if the weather, huge snow just covered him up. Yes, and, and then, actually, and then, then this, this thing, this, this theory, the this theory about him being chased out of the village with all his provisions, I, I don't, I don't buy it. I really don't. No. It's not like I said you've got to go by twelve o'clock. If he'd gone that far, the previous night, with, with bad weather, yeah. <laughs> really bad weather. and he was late, and they said if you don't play or not, anything. But any, everybody have a drink, a break. God's sake! Why am I looking at Alan's backside? It was a lovely. Backside, right? No, I'm sure you've got a lovely backside as well, Chris, and you, Dennis, and you, Julian. And it was the start of the winter. Could you do me a favour? Could you do me a favour and sling me a tea?
article of the week how Otzi the Iceman outfitted himself fur from brown bear and leather from roe deer um, I just wanted to um, show you this um, it's a hand axe um, no it's not a hand axe dad again um, it's a it's a hafted axe um, so we've got the shaft here um, and it's it's basically made out of one piece of wood now this is really this is really important um, and you've got um, a bronze um, axe head here um, and it's been hafted and it's bound this is all one one piece three composite materials um, and th we didn't know how these things looked because archaeologists have been finding bits of wood and thousands of these things and they didn't really know how they worked usually what people have done they, they've 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 had a piece of wood um, and they, they've, they've put a, um, a piece of copper in there and they've tried to cut down a tree and the shaft breaks and they, uh, they've, they've tried to experiment loads of different ways. Uh, and I don't know if any of, you's, any of you guys have used an axe to try to cut down a tree. Um, if, you, if you use an axe in the wrong, wrong way, um, the recoil goes all the way down the handle and you've got a wobbly hand after a while. The, this works very differently. If you hold this and you and you cut into a tree, the recoil coil goes into the head, so it doesn't go down the shaft. Um, and this is quite this is quite an innovation because you're able to cut down the tree much quicker by using something like this, other than a piece of wood, and this is mounted by there. 
Um, you've got a good point there. Uh, we've got a um, very good point there. Um, but this is this is naturally for, for cutting out a bits of wood, maybe but like a canoe. But you could cut down small trees using a tool like this. You could. Yeah. Or even digging up roots. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, we, 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 know, we know around this time as well that they, they're using scapulars from cattle to... Mm a dig with but something like this you get the idea how this is working john this is something of particular interest to you um add to that agree or disagree anything you want to add to that no uh, like i said with the canoe they still use adzes adzes we were saying that it's actually six the other way to dig out the canoes uh it's that angle to get it from like a y shape plan well obviously we're learning from this st material because we found um, examples um, at the um, must uh, the must farm project um, three thousand um, year old village um, near Peterborough. So we're finding uh, up until this point we haven't found anything actually um, completely intact other than the stuff we find in the in pyramids in Egypt. But they're obviously not <coughs> our examples. We've actually find, started finding examples like this in Britain. But anyway, so what oh, I'd like to do. How big is that? I mean, what's, how long is yeah, it? what's the scale? Oh, that's an interesting question. Okay. So if, if you're gonna if you're gonna get that head, so that that's that's about that size. Okay, it's quite big then. It's quite big. It's not small. Oh, you thought it was this size? Well, I didn't Andrea. know. Andrea. No, I didn't know. I oh, right, yeah. That that's just, itself, <laughs> that's that tiny. You're not gonna cut down a tree with something this scale. So if we if we zoom into the scale, uh, because you've got to be able to fit this into his hand. So um, if I can enlarge. Bit more, bit much more than that. Do you think they cultivated um, trees or branches so that they had that straight, you know, that yeah, yeah straight bit like on the end with a knob? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's about right. right. No, that's about right. It can be end. held in the hand. Go on. And then they cut off all the branches to sort of make scars so that it was more robust at the joint, it, if you like. And then they trained the. Um, yeah, it's right. starting yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because yeah, but it would take you a long time to find them, wouldn't you? You'd have to yeah. go searching. And and the, other, yeah. the, the, other, the other thing as well is, yeah. there is actually a knobbly bit there. The other thing as well is, you couldn't actually just pick up wood wandering along. It, this would have to be cultivated. Um, and if you're thinking about um, uh, the process of uh, uh, coppicing, um, pollarding, and uh, hedge laying, and all the rest yeah. of it, you They're can create the wood you right. need. And it'll be actually—it's actually surprising how quickly you can um, yeah. bring on wood. Yeah. Um, in in the house now, we're growing about—we've um, got about 25 saplings that are growing, right? Um, and we're watering them every day, and they're really starting to grow. If if you if you know how to manage plants, um, you could probably get something like this, but it'd take at least a, um, two years to do. You couldn't what, just find it, it like that. Or or? Um, the, the, the on that one. On that one, I can't answer. But but what we're going to do? I told you there was going to be questions that. Um, it's not the metal bit. They've obviously done a split and inserted the shaft. Oh yeah, halved it. Yeah. There's binding. Yeah. It's only a tiny bit of binding. It looks as if it's a natural bend. It is a natural bend. Yeah, that's to give it. That's to give it extra support. So so there there you go. You've got to like think ahead and. Right, so what, we, what they, I need to do, Finland, guys, guys, we're running out of time, we're running out of time. And they've got, it's basically where the end of a tree's been locked off, right. and it's come into a bulbous bit, and they've cut, they carve out the middle for a cut, because I've got one at home. And, bring and, bring and it in it, next week. And then it's, it's, it means that no matter how cold the weather is, it keeps your drink warm. Andrea, we've got to crack on. Right, we'll bring it in next week, Andrea. Um, how artsy the Iceman outfitted himself, fur from brown bears and leather from roe deer. That's some of his footwear, um, that's some of his um, tunic that he's wearing. Uh, we've got leggings as well. Um, you can imagine if, if the body had been excavated, th there's his um, bear hat um, and, sh and his foreign shirt. So um, if this had been... If this had been excavated properly by archaeologists, a lot more of that stuff would be more intact. Brown bear hats, goat leather leggings, roe deer quivers, and a striped jacket from assortments of 
sheep hide. So there we go. See the strips there? It's yeah. very like the, the fur jacket that uh, the picture of the child fur thing that you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. So type of thing Dennis wears when, when he comes to the studio. This is before he? vegan. Um, the new work uh, presents the most detailed, so we've, we've got this detailed explanation. Otzi got his name because he was discovered in Otsland Oaks. Um, scientists believe that shortly after the ice man's death, his body was quickly buried by snow. Yes, good spot there, Ellen. Protecting it from being ransacked by predators and keeping it from decomposing. Um, the ice man preservation was a fluke. Again, if there was anyone else up there with him, you know, we've only got one. Um, it requires a very specific set of circumstances to preserve him. So what we need to do, um, anyone got any questions, they're going to have to wait to the end because we're just running out of time. So what we've got, some of the equipment, we've got a, a dagger here, a stone dagger. Um, we, we've, we've got the arrows, we've got the quiver. Um, we've got tinder fungus, we've got birch fungus, and we've got birch bark. And have you got flints? Um... I, yes, they did find flints, but they found that after the body was found. They, they have got flints. They do have flints. What's, uh, I, the, the thing is, right, I, um, that, that birch, that birch, um, that birch fungus there, um, it, it goes dry really quick. So if you, the two, two rules, right, if you pick anything, any of this off a birch tree, it's, it's that stuff, that the, the, like um, bracket type fungus that comes out. So yeah. you pick that off, right? The rule is, is that if you want to keep that, right, don't take it home and put it on your table at home, right, without tapping it. Because when you tap it, all these grubs come out, right, and you've got to tap it and tap it and tap it. Don't do what I did. I leave it on the um, kitchen table, right, um, and as the children are eating, they're just trying to work out why the table's moving. Um, but it gets dry really quick, so it's perfect um, for uh, tinder for lighting the fire. A little bit more. Uh, so th this study's been going on quite some time to really understand his life uh, the, and here we go DNA analysis suggests that he's lactose intolerant uh, an examination of an intestinal content showed he enjoyed a meal of red deer and bread shortly before he died we know he ate we, we've got the, con the, the remains of two meals one two hours before he died and one eight hours before he died um, and what we're going to do, what I would like to do, I'm not going to go through all this, I'm going to go through the article that I've actually got on the computer here. So um, we're going to move on a little bit. Hopefully, Lynn, do your, do your stuff. That's right. There's a monument there dedicated to Otzi. I know Dennis is going to go up there next week um, and have a look at where Otzi's buried. And global warming. Um, and Bolfold. Remember in um, The Spy Who Loved Me? Bolfold. Um, got oh, shot at me. <laughs> now, he's the... posing there. You don't pose in a shirt. <laughs> Show up there. <laughs> also, very hairy. Look at very hairy arms. Oh yeah, <laughs> not a very hairy chin. Oh, no. for God! Look, look. Can we just move on a minute, right? Um, <laughs> Obviously, what they're doing, they want to show us. But he was obviously wearing all the clothing that you see because. Um, one, we know he was wearing that clothing, and secondly, it would be a bit inhibitive. Um, if he's um, carrying it. And actually, John, yep. the length of his bow is completely wrong. Yeah. It's a it's tiny right. bow. Yeah. It's actually too small. It may it, be on the floor behind his mouth. There's not much on yeah. the floor. Yeah. It, yeah. That, that's balanced. So that's wrong. The length is wrong. Um, so we know, um, we've got an idea how he died. So what we want to do is we want to look at his last meal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck um, oil on him. Why is he on tin foil? You got we'll do the tin foil bit. We'll do that in a minute. We'll come back to the beginning. Tin foil. There, there we go. And what I'm going to do, the magics of Lynn's magic, right? We're going to go back to the here now, right? And hopefully I'll be able to read this article. Oh, there we go. Lynn, you are wonderful. Yeah, I, I really... Not Pardon? Is it not my last? not my last. No, that is no, no. It's no. I know what you're talking. That um, no, it's, it is actually tin foil because if you imagine it, you see all the uh, brittle, broken bits of tin foil, and it's in sheets as well. Um, we want to zoom in and do the tin foil bit. Julia likes doing a tin foil bit. Um, 
Trailer would make more sense, wouldn't it? If there is, you've got strips of tin foil, one strip, two strip, three, there are strips of tin foil, which to me makes this look rather unprofessional. But anyway, moving on, um, hopefully I can do this. 5,300 years ago, Otzi the Iceman, now we know his last meal. Um, now, wh when was this? Now, work out the maths, right? His stomach was properly, pro properly located. Obviously, we're really starting to examine it now. In 2009, so it took him two decades to find it. Now, do you know, can you imagine, right? It's like... Not like it could have gone far, is it? <laughs> they, actually, they actually thought it'd fallen out. <laughs> they, there's actually a description. They thought his stomach had fallen out. Or it'd been stolen by somebody. Uh, it, it, <laughs> Shut up, Helen, please! Anyway, so they, they're, they're actually, um, they're not holding his willy, right? They're actually taking from an endoscope samples um, from his body. And they're, they're, this is him face up. There's his two eyes and there's his mouth. I was going to say there's his three eyes, but I don't think that would make any difference. Um, so what, what basically happens is, is his body, his, um, his stomach, um, as, as I've described, as, you, as, you, as all his breath is being taken out of your body, his, his stomach is al almost drawn up towards your ribs. Um, and I'm so pleased I'm not a female lecturer because that would really excite Alan, wouldn't it? Um, uh, inex inexplicitly uh, pushed up under his ribs. Um, and they took him... It took him two decades to actually find it was here, which is really, yeah. What do you think it's going to be? I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, Ots he couldn't, the excuse is that he couldn't be out of the freezer very long or very often. So in fact, when you think 20 years, they might have only seen him four times or three times. And they decided to make everything yeah, up. So I'd see the Iceman's stomach wasn't where it was supposed to be, so they didn't think it was there at all. They had done scats, um, 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 scat cat, oh, I can't say it. Cat, cat scans, radiographs, they'd done all the scans ever, and, and it took them a while to find the arrowhead for a start. Um, so, inexpressibly <laughs> pushed up towards the rib. Since 1991, um, we've really started to understand him a, a lot more, and, and there, there's also other little details that um, haven't been mentioned. Uh, we've obviously scrutinised his tooth decay and ogled. And uh, is likely frostbite induced numb on his toe. It looked like he'd been up there a few times. We've uh, we've ruminated, and I know Gillian's really into this. Ruminated over parasitic worm eggs in his gut, um, and catalogued every tattoo inked on his skin. Um, and now, after putting the stomach contents through a battery of tests, um, the researchers determined the ice mummy's final meal: dried ibex meat and fat. Um, so he's eaten lots of the fat as well. Red deer, I'm corn wheat, um, and traces of toxic fern. That may have helped a stomach upset. Um, so the lost stomach. Um, it, it was headlines about this. Um, the lost stomach. Um, it once it was once thought because of the gut analysis that he was actually a vegetarian, um, because they couldn't find any trace they were actually eating any meat. We we know that uh, we know we now know because of the um, samples taken from his gut uh, that he did actually eat meat. Um, they located that they located the wandering organ, um, and the thing is when they when they're taking samples of the body, the body has to be defrosted, um, and it's it's been defrosted more than four times, but it's not defrosted um, a lot. And what they did, they, they stuffed an endoscope um, it, into, his, um, into his stomach to take 11 blobs of brownish, yellowy material from his stomach and intestines. So is this what he's laying on, the tin foil, underneath? Is that ice then, just to keep him cold? No, no, it's not. It's, it, the, it's had to be defrosted. And I yeah, but it's underneath, is it? No, it's not. It's, 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 just, it's just the normal um, examination table. So what I'm going to do, I, I want to enlarge on this as well, because we've got a bit of a sample there. So, um, so already under the microscope, we, we know it's a carnivore, um, and that is actually a sample um, of um, some of the um, um, uh, plant material. 
No, it's not. It's, it's, a, st it's a plant stem. It's a plant stem, yeah. Um, we also know that he's into um, drinking milk, even. Um, so is that for the bollocks? Yeah, that, where we've got lipids. Well, it's a very difficult thing to work, go, go there. Um, so back to this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that image, and I'm gonna get my um, um, this is really working out okay today, so I can read this. So finally, Otzi's last meal, lipids and protein analysis indicate Otzi was eating both muscle and fat from the ibex. Um, the high fat stomach contents would have supported energy intensive treks, even though maybe um, ibex fat tastes horrible. So the thing is, from that one line, supported energy intensive treks. He knows he was going up there. If you're going to be an attacked in a village, you're not going to be able, oh, I'll take that bit, you know. So what they're, um, they've got DNA analysis of some of the contents as well. And we know that um, the last meal tells us he's actually been eating red deer. Um, he's been consuming organs like the spleen, which could be quite toxic, but it, he ate it. So various other organs, liver and brain. Um, so um, they, the, we, we, the, the other thing as well is rather fascinating is um, this individual prepared his meal. So if he, he's running away from something, he's actually preparing his meal. Or he's sitting down, working it out. Because his, his diet is quite balanced. By studying the meat's microstructure and chemistry and comparing it to modern cooked and uncooked meats, they surmise Otzi's meal was not heated above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it, um, it looks like it had been dried out meat, which had been put with... He had a bowl there. He sat there with a bowl, eating all this stuff, masticating. It's most likely that the meat was dried for preservation. Uh, there are tiny flecks of carbon also hinting that the meat could have been smoked, along with everything else. Um, and we know he's deliberately eating einkorn wheat and, and toxic bracken ferns. Um, and when this, is, when this is placed into the right amounts, this can deal with stomach upsets. So he was sat there, working out his diet. And the other thing as well is, right, wonderful, wonderful point that Ellen made, a very articulate. Everyone's assuming that the wound of the arrow actually killed him. It may not have killed him. It may have just been the cold. We've, we've got some, somebody who was wounded, it looks like two days earlier, and he survived. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to kill him. There are, there are people who, who fought in the First and Second World War with shrapnel, um, with bits of shrapnel in them that lived 50, 60, 70 years on. So why should this kill the individual? And he was, if he said he had a meal that was two hours old, so he was cooking mm. two hours before. So, so if you're so weak, if, Chris, if you're so yeah, weak, you're going to yeah. do this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can go as far as he might have, have, have um, treated stomachache with these ferns. He may have sat down and thought, oh, I've got a stomachache, and... He was overtaken. This, for me, at least goes a little uh, bit further understanding. Another possibility is that he wrapped his food in ferns, accidentally in digesting pieces. Um, but this is all more or less fixed. Um, peeking, at, peeking at the past through Otzi's stomach, together the diet shows a well-prepared meal with some fibres, proteins and lots of energy-rich fat. This is a person thinking... If you're ill, you don't think. You eat a pot noodle and that's it. That's Michelle's best prepared food. They had knowledge on making, preparing the proper clothes, uh, the proper hunting equipment, and this is also true for his diet. He prepared everything. Um, and they were using the word they were clearly well prepared. Maybe there was more than one individual involved in what's going on. Um... Researchers have long used um, indirect methods to understand his diet. This actually lets us get at it and understand the final areas of, of, of this. The mix of cereals and meats and just two complete arrows in his deer hide quiver suggest he hadn't eaten a fresh kill. Instead, in the hours before his death, Otzi likely consumed the contents of what could be pre prepared, a well-prepared doggy bag. Um, so what I would like to say there is there is so much I could have done about Otzi today. There's so much more information. But I think you've got enough today to go away um, and do a little bit more research. 
Um, we know as well, just a little bit, we know as well that um, um, his diet was grain heavy because of wear on his teeth. Um, he had various um, cavities. Um, we know, for example, that, um, that, that we know, for example, that two months earlier he had suffered some kind of injury. Um, we know that um, we know that he had various different forms of, um, of illness, and stomach ache may be one of them. The, the sixty-one tattoos that they actually found on his body might be all associated with cures uh, for various different ailments. Is this the one that they put the tattoo to the back of him? Yes, yes. And one last point: you all want to know this. Um, the the um, the Y chromosomes um, associated. Um, with a male um, uh, DNA associated with his body. The one thing that they've done, they've, they've looked at 3,700 3, Tyrolean male blood donors, and they found out that 19 of them shared a particular genetic mutation that Otzi the Iceman had. So these 19 individuals are descendants <laughs> from Otzi. Um, yeah, I'm not they might be or they might not be. Do you know what? Don't let's end on a positive there. Um, so they might not be. They might not be, but it it could be. It could be likely. Do you know what? Because you've said that, Kathy. Nobody's going to go yet. Because I'm going to tell you about the curse of Otzi because of that, Kathy. Well, hurry up then. The curse of Otzi. The allegation revolves around the deaths of several people connected to the discovery. Uh, recovery and subsequent examination of Otzi. It is alleged. That one of those that um, one of the two that discovered him, a Helmut Simon, Simon um, Helmut, has actually died since they're dead. <laughs> they all uh, and the first archaeologist who examined Otzi, Conrad Spindler, has also died. Oh, wow. To date, the deaths of seven people, of which four. <laughs> A mysterious accidental um, have been attributed to the alleged curse. However, in reality, hundreds of people have examined Otzi since. Um, and it's only seven people have soon. died. <laughs> exactly. So, so the odds of somebody dying who's actually um, been with Otzi are quite high. What I'd like to say is I know some of you want to go, so we'll have two quick questions and then we'll call it a day. Jan? Have they found any other organs at the heart? Uh, they, they examined, they examined the liver and the spleen, but not the heart, as far as I know. Anybody else got one more question? Nobody else. Um, have you all enjoyed today? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I do believe we've got um, an unknown person called Boothig. We're looking at next week. Oh. Bodica Budicia, oh. beginning with a B. We're, we're doing her next week. If there's no more questions, have you all enjoyed today? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll see you all next week, and we'll be doing the raffle next week. There'll be a bottle of port and. The, the birth of Europe and something from um, um, uh, Michael Bublé. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's next week.